Time for part two of day 16. Decoding these crazy, super long strings of bits. What do we have to do differently in part two? Well, we've got these hierarchies of packets. And now we learn that the operators, that they're different types of operators. So there's some packets, product packets, minimum, maximum, greater than, less than, equal to. So we need to implement all those, which is pretty quick and easy. And rather than just computing the sum of the version numbers, we need to evaluate these sums and products of the sub packets. So let's see how we do that. This just at a glance is the changes I made to the code to add part two. Um, so in no particular order, I realized that now parse has to do more than just sum the version numbers. It's got to actually evaluate these up the results of these operations. And so it now returns an int. I also added a default value um, to the level parameter here so that when you call parse the first time, you don't have to give any argument. Um, I guess I should mention this part. How do we want to do the sum and the product and the min and the max and the greater than, less than, equal? Well, Python has a built-in sum and min and max. From the math module, there's product. Um, this is none because type 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is not an operator. So we won't have anything here. So this is a list of all the operators. And they're in the order corresponding to the type codes. So type 0 is a sum. Type 1 is a product. So that's that. Moving down a bit. Um, I fixed this bug, the order of operations. The um, plus binds tighter than the shift. So I've solved that. And now in um, the parse operator, that's where most of the changes are, there are two nested functions here, parse subpackets by length, parse subpackets by count, and they're changed in this way. And we have to collect the results of these parse operations. So here we create an empty list of values and then we append the results of calling parse. Whereas before we just ignored the result of calling parse. So we, we accumulate these values and we return the values. Parse subpackets by count can be a little more concise in the way it produces the list. I can use a list comprehension because I know, because um, there's a convenient uh, for loop I can use with it. Whereas this one, um, we can't predict beforehand how many times we're going to go through the loop because we don't know how long the sub packets are. Um, okay, so that's these two. And now... We're in the main body of parse. So here's parse. We've got these two nested functions. And, um, oh, actually, this is still part of parse operator. So let's keep going with that. All right, we've got these two subpacket parsers, one by length and one by count. And we put them in a list. And then as before, we pull out the length type ID, which tells us whether it's... Um, by length or by count. Uh, and then we fetch the next 15 or 11 bits, which we will um, use. Um, that's the length or the count. And then we invoke sub packet parsers sub length type ID. So if the length type ID is a zero, we're going to call parse sub packets by length. If the length type ID is a one, we're going to call parse sub packets by count. So we call the appropriate sub packet 
parser and receive from it the list of values. And then we have to just apply the operation. So the type is used as an index <clears throat> into decoder operators, which I showed you up above here. And that returns one of these functions. And then we apply that function or call that function to the list of values. So there, finally, we've got the operators actually doing something. That's great. What else? Okay, now we're at the body of parse after looking at uh, some of the nested functions. And this code is not changed until down here. And I used to have a, a match for the four and everything else because I thought maybe I was going to be adding the other operator types into here, but no. So it really is sort of like an if else. Um, which I've collapsed into an if expression. So we're going to return the result of calling parse literal if the type is four. So if it's a literal that we're parsing, we're going to return the result of parse literal. Otherwise, we're going to return the result of, par of parse operator um, with a given type. And I think another thing I'll show you. So let's we'll put that away. And now we're looking at the, the code itself a little bit bigger. This shows when I committed the changes that affected the lines. So these are the most recent changes. These are a little bit earlier today. I also want to show you the changes I made to um, the test program for this. I added this section to test all the operations. In the documentation, once again, there are a bunch of nice worked examples. So this one is a sum operation, and it has two literals, one and two. And when you evaluate that, you should get a three. So I copied all these packet values and the corresponding value that it should uh, evaluate to, and I put them in the tests. So this one should produce a 3, and the next one is a product that should produce this 54, and so on. And I'll just run all the tests here. just so you can see that all the tests pass. Okay, that's it for day 16 packet decoder. See you next time.